We've got Democrats and we've got Independents, and yes, we even have some Republicans. I know this because they whisper to me when I'm shaking hands afterwards. They say, Barack, I'm a Republican. <laughs> but I support you. <laughs> and I say, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, the reason that people are turning out in these numbers is in part a reaction to what has been taking place over the last seven years. I mean, a year from now, you will go into the voting booth and you will select the next president of the United States. And here is the good news, the name George W. Bush won't be on the ballot. <laughs> The name of my cousin, Dick Cheney, will not be on the ballot. <laughs> that was really embarrassing. We had been trying to hide this for a very long time. And, you know, everybody's got a, a black sheep in the family, or a crazy uncle in the attic. <laughs> His name won't be on the ballot. The era of Scooter Libby Justice, and Karl Rove Politics, and Brownie Incompetence will finally be over. But, but when you caucus in January, and when you go into that voting, voting booth uh, next November, there's another question that you're going to have to ask. See, see, it's not enough just to be against George Bush. Right. The question is, what's next for America? What are you for? What do you believe in? We are at a defining moment in our history. Our nation is at war. The planet is in peril. The dream that so many generations of Americans fought for feels like it's slipping away. People are working harder for less. They've never paid more, you've never paid more for college, or health care, or gas at the pump. It's harder to save. For those who are older, it's harder to retire. And most importantly, the American people have lost faith that their leaders can or will do anything about it. And no wonder they've lost faith. They were promised compassionate conservatism and got Katrina and wiretaps instead. Mm. They were promised a uniter, and instead got a president who couldn't even lead that half of the country that voted for him. We were promised a more efficient and more ethical Washington. Instead have a town that is more corrupt and more wasteful than it was before. And the only mission that was ever accomplished was to use fear and falsehoods to take this country into a war that should have never been authorized and should have never been waged. <laughs> it's because of these failures that people are paying such close attention to this election. It's why everybody is listening so intently to the candidates, not just Democrats, but Republicans and independents who've lost trust in their government, lost faith that it can do anything, but still want to believe that we can rally around a common purpose, a higher purpose. And it is because we are in this moment where people are paying attention, especially young people, because you've been disillusioned and you've been fed cynicism your entire lives when it comes to politics, but you're starting to feel like, you know what, there are a bunch of issues out there that are going to impact me, that are going to make a difference in my life. And I want to say, have something to say about it. It's because we're in that moment that the conventional textbook Washington campaigns just won't do in this election. They just won't do. Not answering tough questions because 
We're worried that our answers might not be popular, just won't do. Telling the American people what we think they want to hear instead of what they need to hear to make good decisions, just won't do. Triangulating and poll testing our positions because we're worried about what Mitt or Rudy or Fred might say about us, just won't do. If we are serious about winning this election and changing the country, then we can't be afraid of losing an election. Because in America, and particularly for the Democratic Party, the party of Jefferson and Jackson, of Roosevelt and Kennedy, you know, we've always made the biggest difference in people's lives when we led not by polls, but by principles. Not by calculation, but by conviction. When we summoned the entire nation, all people, around a common purpose, a higher purpose, a destiny, that's when we've been at our best. And I am running for the presidency of the United States because I think that's the party that America needs the Democratic Party to be right now. A party that offers not just a difference in policies, but a difference in leadership. A party that isn't just focused on how to win an election, the tactics of winning, but is focused on why we should win. A party that is offering not change as a slogan, but real, meaningful change. Change we can believe in. That's why I'm running to be President of the United States of America.